Right. Nope, we're live. <laughs> no countdown. Awesome. <laughs> that was awkward. <laughs> A little bit. That's kind What's of how up? we like to do it. That's awesome. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Marketing Trench. It feels weird to be in Dustin's shoes doing the intro, but here we are. Um, this week's episode is like, for me, this is exciting because I think Jesse and I met a few weeks ago. Um, I don't even remember what conference it was. I, I think we met like prior to Inman and then we met at EXP con face to face. Yeah. Um, what you guys do is pretty awesome. I know Scott has, you know, done handwritten note cards before. Um, Scott and I are like tinkers. We love yep. when people are creative in their marketing um, I think your product is unique and I think you as a person are just like a brilliant, absolute creative. In other words, you're the type of person we like to jam with. Awesome. Um, so, so today we kind of want to talk about like some old school strategies that, that when you merge with some of the stuff that you're doing digitally, like how can we make old school marketing tactics unique and effective out in the marketplace? So, um, Jesse, with that being said, uh, welcome to the show. It's awesome to have you here. But for those of us that don't know you, like, tell us who you are, what you do. Well, thanks, Ricardo and Scott, for having me. Really appreciate it. <laughs> of course. So, yeah, I've been a tech entrepreneur for about 25 years. Uh, and if you guys have this entire podcast episode, I could tell you about all the things that haven't worked out. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. If you, have the next, if you have the next two minutes, I'll tell you about the things that have done okay. Uh, and I've been at the right, right place at the right time. And, and honestly, uh, without any false modesty, because it's true, uh, I've been fortunate to, to work around some incredible people who've made me look good. Uh, <laughs> it's true. And so, and I got in it early. I started my first one in, in the late 90s. It was mercifully short lived, you know, a classic dot bomb. Uh, it was an online retailer. We launched right around the time Google launched, and, uh, and it, didn't quite work out, but I, I learned how to um, I learned how to send email and build sales funnels and build build a website. And so then I started an interactive agency in 2000 with an incredible business partner, and we grew it into a 30 million dollar interactive agency. We did a lot of media buying arbitrage, and this is sort of at the beginning of AdWords and pop up ads and you name it. And we got it acquired in 05. Uh, we sold it to um, this great company. And then around that time, I got interested in domaining, this weird little pocket of the internet <laughs> where, where people, uh, you know, they're like the landholders of the internet, right? And yeah. I started going to these weird conferences. They were called Traffic. And we and we go and these are the people that bought like, you know, razorblades.com after Gillette let it expire mm -hmm. after 2000. Because you remember, like the internet was kind of declared dead kind of among a lot of people. And so uh, I ended up buying in 2005, 2006, uh, hobbies.com. I bought yachting.com, boating.com, biking, oh, uh, <laughs> bar barbecue. I got into these like enthusiast category defining domain names. But the one that really took off was sportsmemorabilia.com. Bought that and wow. we grew it into the biggest autograph store on the internet, uh, top 500 internet retailer and sold it to fanatics in 2013 and really wow. proud to say that now eight years later the framers warehouse workers executives marketers everyone still loves their jobs and uh, that's fanatics awesome an incredible place to work and in between then i started this my wife uh, and i were in a sephora and she we were at the register and i'm like bored out of my skull <laughs> <laughs> and she uh, has this, you know, skin cream and it's like 60 bucks. This is like, I don't know, 15 years ago. I'm like, what? You know, I'm the, your, your prototypical you know, guy. Like what? You know, this like cost more than $4 for, for a cream. Like, well, where is this section, this little section? And it turns out <laughs> half the store, right? Half the store was like this. And so I uh, called laboratories in France and US and we had this, incredible high-end skin cream developed. This is in kind of 06, 07. And we grew it into a full-fledged line of high-end skin um, care products. And we marketed exclusively on the internet. We uh, grew it to $50 million in sales and about 150 oh, wow. employees. Sold it in 09. And, uh, and around that 
time, actually, well, sold that and then sold the memorabilia business. And at the memorabilia business, we would send handwritten notes from time to time to customers. And we noticed that the customers that received notes became collectors. So if someone bought, you know, a Michael Jordan autographed, uh, you know, Gatorade dunk shot photo, we noticed that they had a higher likelihood if they had received a handwritten note from us of uh, turning from a customer into a collector. And I was like, God, there's something, there's something to this, you know, and my grandfather, my grandfather was actually completely obsessed with handwritten notes and he was my hero uh, in, in life. And he uh, would write, you know, he and my grandmother traveled to a hundred over hundred countries together and he would uh, come back and then they would have these postcards printed and then he would write to prospects and customers and I would watch him doing this and then fast forward to graduate school. And after I graduated from my MBA, which he was an incredible uh, human being, he and my grandmother to fund my education. And he <laughs> handed me, he handed me a fountain pen uh, as my graduation gift. And he said, with handwritten wow. notes, you could, with handwritten notes, you can connect with anyone. And that really like plant, you know, inception style that really <laughs> got into me. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah and then the memorabilia thing. And I was like, but the, there was no scale to, to the, to the human writing of the notes. Right. I noticed that the handwriting was often embarrassing and you couldn't, <laughs> you couldn't run campaigns with it and stuff. And so that kind of led, and we'll talk about it later if you guys want, but that kind of led to audience, which is the company that I'm completely obsessed with with and we're um serving customers and we, we love it and it's 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 the note but as you'll see in a sec like the you know this podcast is about the art of you know the handwritten letter but the the key with the handwritten letter is it's not just about the note the note is a trojan horse actually so the note is incredible and drives amazing roi on its own but what it does is it gives you license then to reach out by email to reach out via channels that would ordinarily be ice cold. But instead, you can reach out and say, did you receive my handwritten note in a subject line mm -hmm. or in a LinkedIn connection request? And it gets those those emails get a 12% response rate, which is unheard of for ice cold emails. And so that's why yeah. I mean, that's why I named the company audience, because it's all about taking an ice cold audience and turning it into a warm audience. And once you have a warm audience as a marketer, you <laughs> So thanks for letting me do that little monologue. <laughs> I'm happy to be now, here. Yeah, that's that. No, so that's great. So I I was going through your website and, and I kind of saw that part of the story. Um, like Ricardo said, we've used um, handwritten, I think, mm -hmm. and and it's a writing service, right? So it's a robotic writing service, but you've really kind of created this marketing strategy around this. And you're using your handwritten notes as prospecting tools, right? right? And and that that's pretty slick, man. That's <laughs> that's smart. You're right, Ricardo. That's uh, that's so, pretty good stuff, man. So that's walk really cool. walk walk us through that, Jesse. What is yeah, what does that yeah. look like? That's yeah, cool. So what you can do, I want to make this much broader gauge than me sitting here and 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 selling my my service. I want to really um, leave your 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 listeners or your viewers with a lot of take home value that they can map to their own businesses, whether yeah. they do business with yeah. me or not. Um, and so what can you do with the handwritten note? It's really cool. So first of all, we, um, we do the lead generation for you. So if you're a, a real estate agent, if you're, and so we do a lot of work with real estate agents, mortgage brokers, insurance, let's pick those, um, those sectors. So it's really important because this is a pretty expensive uh, advertising impression in this case, much more than a Facebook, uh, advertising impression or, or printed postcard is about two and a half times the cost of a printed postcard. It gets six times the response just in the first 30 days. So, so you have to be really uh, strategic uh, before you send a single note about who are you going to drop notes into? Yeah. Right? And you want to like take out a scalpel and really be, be surgical about that. And so we uh, have now combined eight different databases and we have about 200 filters. So if you just want to hit, um, you know, apartments that are three bedrooms and above in a certain location and you want to lasso certain street boundaries and you just want owners age 50 plus and you want people with at least 30 percent equity in their homes and you want. Um, the COO to be issued at least eight years ago, and you like this golf club, but not that golf club, and you just want waterfront properties here, but not there, you can pick and choose. And 
only send notes to the most, if you're a real estate agent, the most likely to sell properties. If you're a mortgage broker, the, the folks that are most likely to, let's say, do a refi or whatnot. And so we realized early on that that was a really important component of it is what comes before you deliver the advertising impression. And then we do all kinds of fun stuff within that. So for example, in any area where the properties are a million dollars plus, uh, at least a quarter of them are going to be owned by corps and LLCs. Mm -hmm. And so we actually get behind those properties and those corporate entities. All Everything we do is completely white hat on the right side of the foul line. And, and, <laughs> and forth. But we are, we're tech people first and foremost. And that's why the company's called audience and not something old school. This is, as Scott alluded to, this is a marketing platform. And yeah. so we get behind the LLCs and corps. And so instead of it going to, you know, Bueno LLC or whatnot, it actually, the, the note will be addressed to Ricardo Bueno, much higher open and response. And then what we call keep rate and then the rate at which people keep and display it. And so that's what we, so if you're going to do handwritten notes, guys, whether it's with us or with someone else, you want to optimize the front of the note often neglected. Okay. And you want a character count right around 650, 700 characters is the ideal character count. Character count correlates with response, but only to a certain extent. And then after that, there's actually diminishing returns to that. And it could actually be reverse correlated because people, it gets a little creepy if you send them war and peace all of a sudden. <laughs> so, but you want to, you want to make sure that you you put something on the front of the note that that resonates with their neighborhood. And so pick a landmark, pick a local landmark. Don't put your logo on the front of the note. Don't put a photo <laughs> in front of the note. You know, if you're an insurance, that's tempting, but who wants to put on their mantle or their kitchen counter or their home office? I, I feel like, I feel like we have a pretty high propensity to want to make it about ourselves and slap ourselves on there. Yeah, you got well, it. Well, it's what's, it's what's sold. I mean, it's what's sold to, to salespeople and it's what's been sold to the, to the real estate salespeople and mortgage salespeople for decades, right? It's about self-promotion. Um, but since the age of the internet and the age of information, consumers don't care necessarily about who you work for. They want to make some sort of a personal connection. Now, Jesse, the, 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 the first thing that I'm thinking is how the heck would I know what to write in a note? So I assume that you have... I assume that you have different strategies with basically proven uh, proven copy. Yeah, we have a proven copy, and we know. Again, we're we're digital marketers before anything else, so we uh, we put a QR code. I love that. Everyone, and it has a little scan yeah. me, scan me doodle on there, and it's super cool because we have all this scan data. And by the way, when these tie back, we have individual QR code labels for each note. And so when someone scans it, yes, it'll take them to the profile page of that agent or whomever, but that the person who scanned it doesn't even need to reach out to them because it's we, like the old pearls, right? <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The personal URLs and it, right. you can trace it back to, yeah. Wow. You got cool. it. And so we actually, we ping a little intermediary URL on, on the way to the destination URL and then we send our client a real-time email alert saying that Jane Smith at 123 Main Street just no. go after her. No we way. Also mine, we also mine all the email addresses of all the note recipients. And we find um, not only the email addresses that are associated with the property tax records, but then we, we go and we query different sources that are really hard to find. Um, to, to triangulate into their work emails as well. And then we deliver that when we start an engagement because, you know, modern marketing is integrated, right? And so one of the things that I'd love listeners to take away is like, if you're a modern marketer, like it has to all be integrated because it's just about creating the, you know, the familiarity and consistency and usefulness that leads to trust, right? And then trust breeds cash. And so you want to, if you send the note, never do it in isolation, right? You need to then email, but you don't have their email. So we solve that problem. And then what do you do with the emails? First thing, you import them into your MailChimp or into your follow-up boss or where, you know, whatever CRM you're using or whatever um, email newsletter marketing uh, software you're using, if you're using Constant Contact or whatnot. And now everyone in your farm is receiving your email newsletters. And then you can email them after you send the note 
we make it really, really easy on autopilot actually to send them an email with that magic subject line that says, did you receive my handwritten note? And then we go in and we find their LinkedIn profile URL, which is gold because LinkedIn is trying to become a social network. So you get an incredible amount, everybody of organic reach when you post on LinkedIn. It's not like Facebook or Instagram where it might show up on feeds, a handful of feeds for a couple of minutes and then it's gone. LinkedIn, you really get an embarrassing amount of organic reach. So that, <laughs> people think it's just for people think it's just for um, you know job searchers or whatever. Couldn't be further from like so. You want to connect with everybody. You can have up to thirty thousand connections on LinkedIn. So you want to connect with everybody in your farm. We give you all the LinkedIn profile URLs so you can connect with them. And now the next piece of content. Let's say you're a real estate agent. The next piece of content you post. Let's say it's the the four home staging secrets to selling your home for top dollar. Or it's, you know, the five questions to ask your real estate agent before selling your home. Or it's a quote card or a meme or a, you know, an infographic that shows like home prices in the area or, or whatnot. The next time you post a piece of content on LinkedIn, everyone who you're connected to will see that in their feed. And that's, that's gold right there. So the, the whole approach has to be integrated. So the... I want to kind of unpack this a little bit and, and let's use a hypothetical scenario. Maybe what, um, what's the most common and, and maybe the most effective uh, uh, campaign that you're sending? Is it like for listings, is it home sellers, refinances? What would it be? Yeah. Everyone's looking for listings. Listings are gold. And so okay. these notes are, and the way that we do the campaigns um, there's a lot under the covers that I haven't uh, you know, talked about, but the, uh, the way that we do it, it makes it so real estate agents uh, who send them, for example, do a really great job of driving new listings, even in extremely tight markets. For example, Miami, New York, it's unbelievable. And, and they're all fighting over neighborhoods, not fighting, they're all jockeying for position for, for different neighborhoods with our notes because they realize that it doesn't matter uh, whether they have no business farming. Let's pretend that you've never farmed in Brooklyn before and you're, you're in lower Manhattan and you've never farmed Williamsburg before. Don't be shy. The handwritten note does such a good job of just rising above the noise combined with the digital marketing. And then the way with, that we do the notes that, that you can farm anywhere and, and drive new listings. Can you kind of give us an example of what one of those campaigns looks like and, and, and sort of differentiate between where, like what your company handles and then best practices for what the agent's responsibility is or what they can do to, to build on those results or in, uh, increase conversion on, on their side? Because you've kind of mentioned a couple of different tools. I, I'd love to sort of walk through a scenario. Let's say you're going to Brooklyn. So a note goes out. Um, what's the gist of that, those 600 to 700 characters? What, what, what's the story on the note? So, yeah. So because of the QR code, I know I really got super excited about the QR codes. Uh, <laughs> because of the QR code scans, we know all the note templates that are working. And then we're able in the onboarding call to show them all, the, all the winning note templates. And they can edit them to their heart's content. They can start it. over and create a new note. Uh, but we show them all the winning note templates and we, we drop in five. That's gotta be like a ton of just analytics data. Yeah. Yes. It's great. Yeah. Great. And it's always changing. And so we're able to, um, figure you're not out exactly. speculating. You're literally making a data driven decision Yeah. or a yeah. data driven recommendation. Yeah. It's really cool. And, and so we're able to engineer into exactly the front of note creative, uh, even even the color of the of the pen we uh, we <laughs> figured out by by testing seventy five different pens. That's ridiculous. So, yeah, and it's so it's really fun. By and testing how many pens? Seventy five different pens. You're yeah. kidding me. Yeah. Yeah. So like ballpoint, felt tip. You're right? kidding like me. Silver pen on black paper. You name it. And we do. We're starting to do different color envelopes, different color just notes here. We're starting to really mix it up. We're starting to print. Uh, we're starting to plot on a uh, on post-it notes, and we're we're just having fun with the medium. And uh, yeah. there's, there's a lot to it. But yeah, the the what we do typically. So let's say you're farming Williamsburg. We'll send five notes a year to each household, and we'll typically a typical farm is between 500 and 1500 households. 
depending mm-hmm. on your depending on how long you've been at it, depending on the size of your team, if you have an assistant uh, to handle the inbound activity, because these notes with the digital marketing, they they produce a lot of inbound activity, and they the, which leads to new listing appointments and new listings. So you want to be able to make sure you can handle the activity. For example, we were dealing with one of the top agents in Miami who uh, who did his first mailer with us, he had to pause his campaign for two months to <laughs> process the activity. Yeah, because every 100% of the, the recipients think it's handwritten. And by the way, you're not doing a bait and switch here at, at all. You're not deceiving anybody. You're actually saving a lot of human labor. Anyone anyone that's so, written- so, so hold on for a second, because that's yeah, yeah. important. Yeah. Pe- I, undoubtedly, people will say, well, no, that's inauthentic. I don't want to do that. Yeah, no, I mean, oh, the, the opposite. Anyone who's written more than five um, of these notes will tell you that they would rather give themselves a root canal with no, <laughs> with no anesthesia. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right. No, it is a totally, <laughs> yeah. if you are writing a condolence you, note. You start cramping by like. It's, yeah, you're wearing the, the carpal tunnels brace after, you know, you'd rather flip burger, you'd rather flip burgers, you'd rather bag groceries, you'd rather do anything. This is not. Uh, this is super, super manual and painful uh, work, and the handwriting's not there. What you're doing is this is important. No matter how nice you think your handwriting is, once you write a bunch of notes, you are actually doing the recipient a real disservice because now yeah. they have to read through your chicken scratch. And our handwriting, and this is um, this is one way we we differentiate ourselves in the marketplace in a whole bunch of different ways. It's, it's double the character count, for example, but the handwriting which is kind of like the, the the foundation of this marketing channel is like, is the handwriting totally human looking, but also is it easy on the eyes? Is it yeah. clear, the penmanship clear? And our machines actually, no one A is the same, no one B is the same. They make intentional defects, intentional blemishes. Uh, the We vary up the left oh, and right. We vary up the left and right margins, the, the character spacing, line spacing, paragraph spacing, all varied up, even synonym replacement. So two neighbors can hold up notes by the, sent from the same with the same kind of text and they, they look different. And so we do all of that in the service of the the end customer so that they'll get the highest responses possible from these notes. So typically like in a campaign back to, back to the Williamsburg thing, we'll, we'll send out five notes in a year and each note will have a different front of note graphic and they'll have a totally different text on the inside. Of course, a unique QR code, uh, sticker as well. And we even take, uh, we even went another unique, uh, another differentiator for us is we'll take, we'll inventory items that you send us. And so you can send us business cards, you can send yeah. us market reports. We even, we right. even combine gifts with a note. So if you just did a house closing and we have a, another way we're differentiated is we have an incredible app where you can upload photos that are unique on the front. And so if you just sold a house to Jane Smith and you go over to Jane's place with a bottle of champagne, you guys toast and you take a selfie with you and Jane, as you're walking out within 20 seconds from our app, you can send her a, a note with the photo <laughs> you just took on the front and combine it with a Nest candle, combine it with a personalized charcuterie board, wow. combine, it with, combine it with a succulent gift box set, combine it with Serafina gummies. We've chosen like 10 awesome gifts in different price ranges. The gift is combined with the note and it's shipped and then, you know, and then Jane uh, receives, receives it, you know, a couple of days later. So it's pretty wow. cool. That's fantastic. Okay. So let's go back to the process. So you're sending the notes, the, the notes go out, the QR code is typically going to a landing page that you create or like the, the, uh, the recipient the, would create the, the recipient's website or something or like, like the, that, right? the, the agent would create. That's right. And the agent creates, and you can go crazy on that. For example, uh, Frederick Eklund, you know, the, the million dollar listing guy loves, loves our notes and he's uh, has created different landing pages. So if someone from Pacific Pacific Palisades in LA uh, scans the note, it'll, it'll take them to a specific landing page with a video where Frederick says, Hey, welcome, you know, Pacific Palisades residents. Thanks for scanning my note. And then he'll talk. And then if, you know, someone who owns a townhouse in New York city scans, one of Frederick's notes, it goes to a different lander. So you can have it go to a landing page of your choice. So, so think- you said you're you said you're collecting the data and you're appending the data. Um, are you are you then just sending that data to to your to the customer to the agent? 
Yes. Is, is that is that what's going on? Because it, 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 it almost it also sounded what, what like I, what I think is different. What I think is different here, for example, Scott, and and I'm not sure if this was entirely explicit. Other services, you're typically providing your data to the company, and then they ma- yeah. yeah they mail for you. Here, it's like instead of going to your title company and getting data, you're literally getting that data straight from audience. Yeah, and they're doing a lot more. You can send over your sphere. Of course, you can send over your sphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. your sphere all day long. We'll even enrich your sphere with emails and LinkedIn profiles. Oh, wow. and we'll, we'll, we'll get behind the properties that are owned by LLC Corps too. That's the part that I was asking. Is is you you said that there were emails that you were dropping emails to these people on their LinkedIn profiles? Is that also part of your service? It is part of our service. So everything is it's an all in one platform. It's basically what we learned from real estate agents, for example, early on is like, wake me when it's over. Like when I'm, <laughs> if I'm happy, yeah, yeah, yeah. what was that? No, you're hundred percent right. That's all, you know, this is a lot of moving parts and, yeah. and it's hard and, and everybody sees it and they're like, that's fantastic. Who can do it for me? Exactly. <laughs> uh, and it's not out of laziness. It's more like, Hey, if I'm trying to generate, my farm and my leads myself, the cash register is not ringing. Like, and that's not, that's not the best and highest use of my time. And so we, we've gotten really good at that piece of it. And, and you, that's essential to do really smart lead generation. And so you're dropping the notes into the most likely to sell properties and you just get a lot more out of the marketing medium when you do that. And then you have to be a chess player, not a checkers player about, (laughs) about, you know, the actual, notes after they go in it's like okay how can i kind of like eat all the meat off the marketing bone at this point because i've just sent them a note and then 10 weeks later another note goes in and another note all with all with different front of note graphics now they're collecting them because we make them by fold so people just put them right on their kitchen counter or whatnot and now you need to drop in the emails right you need to drop in uh, the linkedin connection requests uh, and a great tool for for linkedin uh, automated linkedin is called octopus crm by the way uh, I love that tool. <laughs> but you can, it's just a Chrome plugin and you can use it to just automatically connect with people and you can even build funnels. And so a week later you can endorse their skills and so forth. And uh, so Octopus CRM is a really good um, tool for that. So does, do the subsequent postcards, um, do they change depending on any engagement um, that the, 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 the client might have or the consumer might have. So if they scan the QR code on the first one, does that change the message on the second postcard? So that doesn't happen. Uh, but if they become a client, for example, and sell them a home, we detect it and we remove them from the mail list. Uh, Got if, it. if so, and the, the far, the leads that we generate for them are actually dynamic. And so if they like property owners that have at least 30% equity in their homes, where the COO was issued at least eight years ago, where um, the you know they choose seven or eight different um, filters, or it's a it, or they like nod listings, or they like fizbos, or they like pre foreclosures, or whatever. If that the criteria from mailer one to mailer two changes, and there's certain households that fit those criteria and certain that don't, we revise the mailing list accordingly. And so you're every month you're guaranteed to drop handwritten notes only into households that fit your exact criteria. Okay. So you're sending out the postcards. You're, you have some mechanism under your umbrella, under your marketing services where you're connecting with them on LinkedIn, you're dropping marketing messages on LinkedIn. Is there also an email uh, component to this? Yes. There's an email component as well. And we don't automate that because you don't, want to automate the process of sending, you know, 600 or 800 uh, emails. If it's an email newsletter and follow up boss is a, a tremendous uh, job of this, of seasoning IPs and then uh, making sure that you have really high deliverability into, into the yeah. inbox. But it, when you're sending brand new emails with a subject line, did you receive my handwritten note? <laughs> it doesn't look like an email newsletter anymore. If you try to send hundreds of those at a time, Chances are in Gmail, for example, you push to the promotions promotions tab if you're lucky, but chances are you'll go right to junk. And so what we do is we deliver a spreadsheet and we have links that they click on 
And it, it's amazing. You click on a link and it opens up a fully filled out email with the subject, the, the e person's email address, the subject line and the body of the email. And the subject line says, did you receive my handwritten note? And then the body says, hi, Jane. I just wanted to make sure you got the handwritten note I sent to this address. And then it has her address <laughs> there. Totally innocuous, totally harmless. And that's the thing that gets a crazy response rate. So yes, the email thing is, is on autopilot basically. Okay, so this is you. You keep dropping all of these bombs, and you're doing it so nonchalantly. <laughs> and, and I'm trying to put it in. I'm trying to put this whole thing into context. Oh, awesome. So, so like so far, you've talked about three different contact and communication strategies that are completely not mainstream. Nobody's talking about this. Nobody's doing this. Right. So you're dropping these postcards. You're dropping them a link on on LinkedIn. You're sending me, I'm your customer, you're sending me a spreadsheet of all of the postcards that you sent out this week, this month with links to pre-filled email templates that all I have to do and you do one that so that I can send one click send and I'm not fight, I'm not raising any red flags on email servers. It's coming from my email address with my email signature and it's just, a, and it's already, and it's already all done. That's it. That's it. It's done for you. There's very little. That's one of the things they love about it. And it's also um, it. what it does for the real estate agent, for example, is it creates a lot of consistency and discipline in your farming. And, you yeah. know, Tom Ferry, all these amazing coaches are like, Guy, be consistent with your farming, be consistent with your farming. And they, they leave the, 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 the conference all full of vim and vigor. And then like, oh, how should I be consistent with my farming? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> how do I do it? <laughs> it's hard to do. And so we built, we just like enforced that, like just because yeah. of the, and it becomes really hard for other agents in your farm to horn in on your farm at that point. After you're sending them handwritten notes and then you're doing the digital marketing follow-up, man, if there's someone interested in, in selling their home, you're going to be the, you're going to be the person that you're going to be top of mind, which is what, Everyone's going for it. And then we give you a digital marketing strategy in a box, which you didn't have before. And so Buffini and Tom Ferry and all these coaches and Larry at, at, at Ninja Selling and stuff, they're like, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, LinkedIn. You got to be consistent with LinkedIn. For example, they're like, how, how do I be consistent with LinkedIn? <laughs> well, first, first, the little secret is you have to be connected with each household in every neighborhood across your entire farm. And that's really hard to do because if, if you have someone's physical mailing address and their first and last name, which LinkedIn profile, like how do I even highly manual um, process? And we find all those. And so you can connect then with everyone using a tool like Octopus CRM or another Chrome plugin, you can just connect with all of them. And the cool thing too, is you can then go to follow boss and enrich the data accordingly. So you can then add you know, if you're missing LinkedIn profile URLs and emails, for example, now you can enrich the data inside of that CRM. And that's data is power in marketing. So, so, so similar to the spreadsheet that you're sending for the email templates, is that how you're providing the LinkedIn, uh, the LinkedIn, you're, you're providing a spreadsheet with all of their LinkedIn profiles. Yes. And also like geo targeted to what you're mailing, yep. your mailing territory so inside is. Of our app, inside of our app as well, you get all the scan alerts are all consolidated in there and in, inside okay. of your app. And so you can see the scan alerts. Uh, and then email, if you want to, if you want to one click email people directly from your app, no, no problem. You can do that. If you want to one click connect with people uh, in, into their LinkedIn, you can do that directly from our, from our app as well. But we found that there's a lot of people that just love spreadsheets. They've been using them forever. And so we, we mm -hmm. send those as well. And we just deliver them in the form of a, a of a Google drive. Is, is there um, the last piece that I'm thinking is uh, custom audience and Facebook marketing of that mailing database? Uh, is that accessible to your customers as well? Yeah, so we don't actually open up, you know, Facebook campaigns for, for our customers. A lot of but people. It, but, have it, right. but if they have that data no Scott, in the spreadsheet, it's easy to upload to Facebook as a customer. Oh, audience. okay. So, okay. So you're providing yeah. all of their information on the spreadsheet, and then we can take the spreadsheet and upload it. I mean, they get a custom audience. Yeah. Okay. And if okay. like you're using Follow Boss and Whitley as an example, Whitley automatically takes your CRM data 
and builds a custom audience in Facebook and automatically right. retargets them with like video ads. Right. Right. Yeah. That's wow. A great- that's a, that is a super, super cool. That is a super cool alternative. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's a lot of different angles that I just, there's no way you could do that on your own. I, I mean, you'd go crazy <laughs> we, we, <laughs> and you couldn't do it consistently. Yeah. There's a, there's a title rep who hasn't been in title for very long, um, who sends a custom handwritten note card, but he's actually writing them. Yeah. He sends them to every person that he meets. So he sent one to Dustin and he sent like, so he does his daily prospecting. He wakes up like at four o'clock in the morning before the end of the day is over. He like, he literally goes and sends those handwritten note notes out. And, and, then, and then he puts his hand in a bucket of ice water for an hour. <laughs> he puts his, <laughs> and it's like, but the thing is, it's like, it's nobody does it. Yeah. So it's such a treat when you get it. And it's such a, it's not reciprocity. That, that's not the word I'm looking for. Like we do things that create a, such a sense of reciprocity with people. Um, and, it, and so we keep doing those things. Like it's, it's how can you create those magic moments or, or experiences with, customers and potential customers. I don't think anyone does that traditionally with handwritten note cards anymore. That's it. Yeah. No. And, and listen, I would, to go back to the question of authenticity. Um, I think the authenticity is in the fact that that's the communication method you choose, right? Mm -hmm. Because whether you're, whether you're using technology to, um, to scale or automate that communication, you're still doing it. It's still a handwritten note. You probably came up with the text, but you wrote it once and then it's being delivered. The there authenticity doesn't end when you use technology and automation to amplify your efforts, right? The very fact that you, that you determined that this is the way I want to communicate with my prospect base, my database, my, my past clients, whatever, um, yeah, it's and, and I love the I, I love the QR code. That's absolutely brilliant. I was one of the people uh, ten years ago when they started talking about QR codes, and I was like, <laughs> "That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Why would I? Why would I? I'm not going to download an uh, app." I think we all said that. Yeah, we yeah. All said that. and and now I'm like the biggest fanboy ever. It's like <laughs> all all cell phones, all cell phones. Uh, awesome. You just pointed at it. And, uh, and integrating that in that just enriches the experience so much. Cause like you said, you send that to, and, and because it's a Pearl, because it's a personalized URL that that QR code is going through, you can create a landing page with a video on it that touches on exactly that you can relate to them specifically. It's like, Hey, Hey, I'm glad it, you know, welcome. What, whatever you said, the, the community residents, um, I'm, you know, I'm really glad you're here. I'm super excited about whatever is going on. Our home values have gone up 17% in the last 12 months, and we're all really excited about it. I've created this resource for you to get more information on what this means to you, whatever the case is. But being able to, to personalize those messages, um, that's just Wow, this is yeah. I, I love this because there's so much you could so much you can do with it. <laughs> but it also sounds like just if you don't overthink it and you don't overcomplicate it, it just it's fantastic out of the box. But if you really wanted to noodle on it and try to figure out how to segment some of those lists and segment some of those experiences, you could create some really, really cool, super high converting uh, contacts and, and, and conversations using those tools. So, so, so yeah. you, you have a lot of, like we talked about, you have a lot of data analytics on, on sort of what messaging works best. So you have a lot of uh, realtors, lenders, they close a transaction with the client. Like what, what's an example of a campaign that they would use to try to get more referrals and repeat business with that closed customer? Yeah. So you can, you can do that uh, a bunch of different ways. You can just send over, you know, a spreadsheet. We have uh, integrations with uh, working on one with an incredible CRM called Follow Up Boss. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's spot. awesome. I've, I've heard, good, heard good things. things. I've heard good things. Yeah, uh, Salesforce. Uh, yeah, you know, HubSpot. We're 
uh, working on integrations there. So you can send a note directly from a contact object. But the way that you would surprise and delight your current clients at scale, for example, what I do is, uh, so I use our app, but I also supplement it with a spreadsheet because what you can do is take, let's say there's 500 people that you want to send New Year's cards to second week of January. So you take those, that spreadsheet of the 500 people and you could just do an additional column for the customized line that you want to say at the beginning. So that line might be, hey, hey Scott, it was, thank you so much for having me as a guest on, on your podcast in December. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure we get together at the next Inman conference or, or whatever, right? So you want to customize that. And then you just name that a merge variable, like it could be custom or whatever. And then we know that in the, in the template, uh -huh. that, that goes at the beginning. And then the rest of it is just, just the rest of the message is just boilerplate. Right. And that's kind of how you want to scale these things. Unless you wake up at 4 30 AM and you're, and you're writing uh, to everyone you ever met. That's oh, different. Wow. Uh, but this guarantees also that the handwriting is going to be uh, really easy for them to read. And I can't emphasize that enough. Like it's actually a little bit of a cur curse and, and you're very unlikely to write something that's 700 characters when you're doing it yourself, especially after the third or fourth note. <laughs> this allows the this allows the wine to decant a little bit. <laughs> it allows it to breathe. So you can tell the story about uh, what you're do and whatever else. And so that's how I do it. And inside of our app, you can tag things. And so you can tag stuff, um, whatever you want. You can do customers. You can do VIP. You can do certain neighborhoods you could do whatever tag you want that makes sense for micro segmenting your database yeah and you can use that tag and you can select all those people and then right inside of our app you can do unique lines per person and that just automatically gets inserted at the beginning of each one and then they just get sent out literally you can the, the we've run the math and you can send 400 notes in the time it would take you to do uh, to hand write 40. so it's 10 times the speed of handwriting and most of all it's just it's it's gorgeous like it's a, it's a little yeah. more hard. your worst case scenario is you send someone something that they really enjoyed reading and that they enjoy keeping and displaying that's your worst case scenario from sending one of these notes so if so they log on to your app and i i assume you probably have a library of templates of pictures yeah. but you can upload your own you can upload your own uh we pre-populate your app that's actually important we when you become a client of ours we pre-populate your app with a suite of creative and those creative are all based on your farm so if you're a real estate agent in san diego hmm. we will populate <laughs> hypothetically we'll populate it with uh all kinds of creative around landmarks that are then put it's through our, our that are put through our software that creates this like watercolor kind of version. We put we put everything through filters that optimize for keeper. You can't really see this, but this is like a Monet like impressionistic watercolor oh, yeah. artsy type thing. We okay. do that with everything. And then what we do is we create a thanks one, congratulations, Thanksgiving, New Year's, uh, you know, holiday. We um, you know, uh, we, we create about 15 different creatives for you. Again, you can send one off uh, images to your heart's content. But the way to scale this, if you're trying to surprise and your buyers, the way to really scale it, not drive yourself crazy, is you you choose something that we've already uploaded into your into your app that's guaranteed to be beautiful and a keepsake. And then you select a bunch of contacts and then you customize each one slightly which is fun too. It's like you visited with Scott a little bit there. <laughs> you didn't just mindlessly send, you know, and Scott probably wants to hear something um, custom and it would increase the keep and display rate and response rate. So that's kind of the most efficient way to do it. So what is the average duration of one of these campaigns? And, you know, again, I'm trying to think of what could somebody possibly say about this? Uh, like, you have 12 months worth of five letters in, in 12 months. And then the second 12 months doesn't just restart the exact same 12 month campaign. Right. Yeah. Well, you want to send, you want to send a new note to the same household um, every 10 weeks uh, in, in perpetuity. And that's a, you okay. just, 
that you just think about that as a it's a pretty modest investment it's somewhere do you, do you think do you think if somebody's already doing that to their farm if they're doing just listed just sold and those sorts of postcards yeah just listed just so this is not mutually exclusive to other marketing like my my recommendation is anything that's working for you continue for sure yeah. um the one caveat there is if you're bombarding people's physical mailboxes with just sold um pieces um, you could you could definitely eliminate that piece of your marketing and and do this. We send them every ten weeks so that you can do all kinds of stuff in between each mailer. So you these are ten weeks apart, and so in between, again, modern marketing. You wanna you wanna send the emails. You wanna make LinkedIn connection requests. You wanna post content on social media. You wanna do all these things. So they're again, it's all about consistency and familiarity and trust. And so we do mm -hmm. it every, every 10 weeks, um, and whether it's year one, year two, year three, you're doing a different note with a different creative and, and something. And, and so you just think you just run the math as a real estate agent, for example, if you're hitting a million dollar home, right? And your commission after you pay your brokerage is, let's say, twenty five thousand dollars, two and a half percent. It doesn't make sense to make a does it make sense to make a $12.50 or $15 investment per year in that household for the optionality, for the possibility that they're going to turn into $25,000 listing? I will sit at that <laughs> in Vegas all day long. And the answer yeah. is yes, you just want to continue it. So the name of the game is not to do the, the year and send five and then just, just relax, although they will have your notes. But it's to every 10 weeks, you can just continue and you can have a lot of fun with it in any year. Do a really fun, you know, Thanksgiving one. Do a really fun, um, you know, New Year's uh, card. Uh, and then, you know, do a fun house, house anniversary card because we let you know when the person's house anniversary was. So you can then send, send a card that way. Uh, and we, even, we even generate um, unique creative whenever you sell a home. And so we create a just closed creative and we even put that person's home through our software. So it creates this beautiful impressionistic version of their home. And then you can use that as a just sold piece with our notes and you can post it to social media and so forth. Yeah. And Ricardo, it's, if you're doing just listed, just sold, I mean, they, they've got the, that really great bridge from the physical media to the digital media mm -hmm. with this QR code. So you can pull them there. And I'm even thinking of, of like some socially conscious sort of maybe you're doing a fundraiser for a community fundraiser in that area. You know, what the, maybe you're doing a food drive or a toy drive in the community for a yeah. family and you do a one off out there, something like that. And you're going to a landing page uh, where they're contributing or here's instructions on how to how to. Uh, help this family or how to, you know, yeah. help raise food or something like that. Um, super, super powerful. I mean, Ricardo, you and I have been working, we, we, we've been talking about this forever. And, you know, it's, it's how do you bridge that physical mail to a digital message? And, and just a postcard with a QR code that's just all pre-printed is not nearly as effective. What did you say the... Yeah. In the first 30 the days, response. With our, yeah, with our notes in the first 30 days, you get and the way we do the notes specifically with the front of note creative and everything, six times a response of <laughs> those cards. And we've done we've done tests to the same address, what? thousands to the same addresses with the yes. printed postcard. And then with this and it's exact. And the, the asterisk there is at six X just in the first 30 days. And so the, the thing is, the 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 half life on the ROI with this is really long. And so you, uh, you're you going to get a lot more response over time with these. But it's just in the first 30 days, it's 6x. And it's two and a half times the cost and six times the response. I'm no mathematician, but like that. <laughs> We're sitting at that table too. All day long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, this has been fantastic, man. Good, uh, good find, Ricardo. This is uh, <laughs> Jesse and great job on this. You really, uh, you really thought it out like, like Ricardo said. Uh, you know, we like to talk to the innovators. We like to talk to people that are thinking about this stuff differently and trying to solve the really hard problems that your average busy professional just can't wrap their head around. They either don't have the technical acumen or they have no idea of where to start building this assembly line 
of communication and conversation and conversion. We're, and, we're, uh, we're, we're, start, we're starting to use um, audience at Follow Boss. We're, we're going to do it to engage our customers. We're going to do it to do like pre-event outreach and post-event outreach. Yeah. It's just, it's just as a salesperson, what can you do to create those little um, moments of, of, of little magic, I guess? What can you do to create an experience? Yeah. And what can you do in your business to literally like create a competitive advantage for yourself? Because as yeah, salespeople- my, gear, my gears are turned over here. I'm just like, like, <laughs> like as, as salespeople, it's such a grind to do what we do. If you're a realtor, you're grinding. You've yeah. been gr the last two years have been like chaotic. You're grinding. So what can you do to surprise and delight your customers, your prospects? Yeah. And again, just to create a competitive advantage for yourself. Yeah. This, I feel like, creates a competitive advantage for yourself. Yeah. Door knocking gets old. <laughs> cold, cold, cold calling, texting, ouch. Cold emailing that's not following up on a handwritten note like this, ouch. You know, the, the response. And then, uh, and then even Facebook campaigns, since, uh, since Apple did iOS 14 update, right? Facebook uh, response and uh, return on ad spend has gone way down. Uh, and so what do you do in the age of COVID, right? Where people are just longing, starving for that connection to send a personalized handwritten note and form that meaningful bond yeah. with every member of your farm. And then just, put, and most of all, put it on autopilot. So it's, it's autopilot farming. And then, and then it's also sphere nurture. Like we have a whole set, uh, we have a six touch sphere nurture campaign that we put on autopilot. So the moment you sell a home, right? Or whether you're on the buy side or the sell side, uh, even, even orphan buyer uh, sphere nurture, we have a killer orphan buyer uh, sphere nurture uh, sequence that we can put on autopilot. We automatically detect when you've sold a home or whether you represent a buyer or seller. And then we, we trigger the sphere nurture. You know, the fact is 92% of buyers and sellers right after the transaction say that they would work with the same agent, 17% end up working with the same agent and it's all about nurturing your sphere. And so we put that on autopilot as well. Awesome. Jesse, where, awesome. where, where can people learn more about you? Audience.co and you can fill out, there's literally first name, last name, email, and you can book a demo that way, get on a Calendly. And one of our, one of my colleagues uh, would be thrilled to, to give you a 30 minute demo and walk you through the ins and outs of the platform and, and answer any questions and go from there. We make it completely risk-free. The plans are all uh, annual and they're all about driving new listings for real estate agents. And we work with mortgage and insurance and so forth, but uh, there's a 45 day risk-free guarantee. Uh, I can tell you very, very few people uh, end up exercising <laughs> that because it works so well. And the moment these land in, the moment your first mailer goes out and starts landing in people's mailboxes, you'll know that this is completely different because the phone mm -hmm. starts ringing, you start getting texts, you start like, you're like, wow, there's a lot of inbound activity. Awesome. Scott, okay. where can people find more about you? Findmywayhome.com. Easy peasy. Easy awesome. peasy. I got a lot of webinar content coming for you guys. So if you want to get on that list, go to ricardobueno.com. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Marketing Trench. Dustin, we miss you. We'll yeah. see you guys next week. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jesse. See you guys. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. Ricardo.